busy lives, sometimes it's nice to save on time. But of course, we don't want to skimp on flavor, do we? No. The answer is no. Today, I am making one of my favorite time-saving dishes, sausage meatballs with pepper and onions. Really good. This is inspired a little bit by my husband, Aaron. His favorite food in the world is meatballs. And this is my easiest way to make meatballs when I don't actually really wanna make meatballs, you know? So, my hack is using pre-made sausage. So this recipe you use four sausages and you just take that casing off because someone has put so much deliciousness into this meat. There's garlic, there's spices, there's everything wonderful and they're pork so they're nice and fatty and juicy. So basically I wanna divide each sausage into about six-ish meatballs. If you want, you can use your hands. You could use a knife and then have meat cylinders, but that doesn't have a ring to it, does it? <laughs> or you can use a little disher. So I'm just gonna kind of like scoop, kind of like this, just so I don't have to wash my hands later, because I've already done that, and plop that right onto an oiled baking sheet. So this is really great. We're going smaller meatballs here, because I want little bite-sized guys. But if you wanted, you could totally go bigger, if you're feeling that. But just kind of, you know, do your thing. Scoop those meatballs. And then I want to put a little bit of oil on top of this just to give it a bit more, just a little bit more fat on there. Yes, it's pork, it's nice and fatty, but a little bit more oil just gives you more golden brown power, which is great. So just drizzle a little bit on top. And then those babies need to go into my 400 degree oven for about 14 to 16 minutes or until they're cooked all the way through. Those are gonna get like golden brown and sizzly and delicious. And I didn't even have to make meatballs. I just cut up a sausage, which is excellent. So now I wanna to get to work on the pepper and onion situation. So I've got a pan here over medium high heat because I want it nice and hot because I want a bit of a char. And I've got two yellow onions that I've sliced up as well as a bell pepper. I'm gonna slice up another bell pepper here and I'm using red bell peppers, honestly. We don't use a lot of green bell peppers in my house because my mom says they give her indigestion. So we stick with the red pepper family. Anytime you're looking at bell peppers, you basically go from red is the sweetest and green is the most bitter. And as you kind of go along that weird traffic light of red, orange, yellow, and green, it gets a little bit more bitter. So sticking with red is like my best one for sure. So just slice those babies up. And I like to cut my peppers from the inside out. Cause if you ever have a dull knife, which this is not, and try cutting through pepper skin, oof. What a bummer that is. It takes so long, it's so hard. But if you go from the inside out, it's way easier. So just slice those up. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of oil into my hot skillet, just to give those peppers and onions something to kinda get cooking with. And just add those peppers and onions right on in. That is looking amazing, absolutely delicious. Now I wanna season that immediately with a little bit of salt and pepper. And that's gonna start kind of drying out some of the moisture in those onions and peppers, which is a dream. That's gonna help them cook down a little quicker. Those need about four to five minutes. And while they start doing their thing, I'm gonna chop up some garlic. Now, if you've ever seen me cook before, you know that I hate chopping garlic. I like rasping it. I hate chopping it so much. But with this recipe, as opposed to finely mincing it, I'm just gonna slice it up. Because garlic is kind of weird. The more you cut it, the more strong it gets. So when you mince your garlic, that's the punchiest flavor you're gonna get from it. But if you slice it and cook it, you get this really soft, sweet garlic flavor. So even though you're eating like a big chunk of garlic, if you cook it nice and slow, it gives you this like lovely kind of roasted garlic flavor. I mean, if you think about it, roasted garlic is a whole clove, but when you cook that down, it's just like garlic butter, which is amazing. All right, so now I've got some of those onions and peppers cooked down already, so I'm gonna add that garlic on into that pan. Give that a bit of a stir. And then one of my favorite, favorite flavor shortcuts is a can of tomato paste. This, someone else has cooked this down for a real long time. It's going to be rich and tomato-y, and all I have to do is open a can and dump it into my pan. You could use any sort of dry herb. Dry Italian's my go-to, because it's got everything I like in it. And I'm also gonna do a bit of heat with a bit of chili flake. And then to bring this together and make this nice and saucy, I'm gonna add in your drink of choice. A cup of water would be great. A cup of beer would be even better. But my personal favorite, a cup of white wine. What I'd call my Tuesday wine, yes. Just something nice and dry that you like drinking but don't feel bad about pouring into your food. 
Now I'm gonna bring that up to a simmer. Let that cook for a few minutes. Those meatballs are smelling delicious. We are all about saving you money and time today. I'm making one of my favorite time-saving dishes, sausage meatballs with peppers and onions. <laughs> Oh my gosh, they look so delicious. They're perfectly bite-sized and they are perfectly cooked. So I'm just gonna add those on into my sauce here with all those delicious cooked down. Oh, and I'm gonna add that fat too because why not? That's just flavor right there. Oh my gosh, this smells and looks so good. Just gonna stir that all together and just let those flavors come together while I make a super quick and easy homemade bun, which does not sound quick or easy, but I'm gonna convince you it is. Okay. So right over here, I've got a ball of store-bought pizza dough. This is something that I use so often in my own kitchen. It is a great way to get like nice, yeasty, delicious bread super quickly. So my one trick is take it out of the fridge about a half an hour before you start using it. That's gonna relax the gluten and make it easier to work with. So I'm gonna divide this baby into about six equal-ish portions. And just cut right on through. Also, if you can't find it at your local grocery store, you can go to your favorite pizza place. Be like, hey, hook me up with some dough, please. And they might just give you some, which is always a good thing. You'll have to pay for it, but you know, that's life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So just six-ish equal. This is also great if you wanted to do this for like a little party and do mini ones, absolutely delicious. And now I'm just gonna form those into little kind of flatbreads. So make them into a bit of a ball. Not gonna lie, sometimes these look like footprints in my house. They're always kind of oblong because I never really make them into a ball. I make them more into like a squircle. So <laughs> now I'm just pressing that out until it's about a centimeter-ish thick as the dough is right here. And I've got a pan over here over medium heat. Now I'm gonna add in a little bit of oil. You can also just oil the dough if you'd like. But now I'm just gonna fry these babies up. Pop that dough in and let that cook for about three to four minutes, two to four minutes actually per side until golden brown and a little bit puffy. Basically you're looking for when you poke it, once it's flipped over, it springs back because that's gonna be perfectly cooked, amazing little pizza dough buns, which is amazing. So my meatballs and peppers are looking great. So I'm gonna bring those on over here. Ooh, cast iron skillet, she's strong. Like those look, absolutely delicious. Those are done. You could put that on noodles right now. That would be an absolute dream. It would be so tasty and wonderful. Or you could be like me and make a little sandwich. I'm not gonna lie, anytime I'm trying to save time, I'm making a sandwich. So these are those little pizza dough bun flatbreads all cooked up, golden brown and delicious. Now I'm gonna cut this baby in half just to give me like a nice little kind of pita situation. You can also make this into like a little pocket if you're feeling it. And then to put this whole dish together, get some of those amazing little meatballs, those peppers and onions, and just spoon it on top. And just a warning, it's a little sloppy, but it's gonna be grand. And I'm warning because my new friend Kyla is gonna be coming up to eat this delicious meatball sandwich. <laughs> I'm so excited. You're, I think, the first audience member to walk on into this kitchen wow. right now. Honored, honored. Your makeup looks amazing. Oh, thank you. Oh my gosh, where are you from? I live in Toronto here. Oh, right yeah. on, yeah. local gal, I love yeah. it so much. It's like, it's a Durham day, but you're like Toronto. I live in Toronto here. I love yeah. it, I love it. Yeah. Well, are you ready to try this, baby? I am. Okay. I am. So you just kind of sandwich it together. You end up with this beautiful little number. Okay, I'm gonna give it to you. Okay. This might be a huncher, not gonna lie. I'm Any not, good sandwich. I'm not wearing white, so that's Yeah, good. you're good. You wore red, she matched the sandwich. Mm. Is it good? Amazing. Amazing! Mm. Uh, oh my gosh, well mission accomplished. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm gonna have some of this dough. Do it. You look great. Oh, thank you. You ate that like a pro. <laughs> Making anybody you eat on camera. breakfast. Oh yes, this is a <laughs> breakfast of champions. Meatball and peppers mm -hmm. and onions. Can't go Amazing. wrong. Can't go wrong. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.